Would you turn in your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 5? God is an incredible God, amen? You try to put him in a box, you try to figure him out, he'll prove you wrong every time. You cannot put him in a box. You can't figure him out. Those that have tried have failed. Probably out of pure hubris, the attempt was made. Luke 5 I read the first uh, seven verses. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. We thank you so much, Lord God, for your word. Because your word speaks truth. It speaks life. Lord God, we thank you so much for what you are doing right now in our lives. And regardless of where we are at in our faith, Lord God, regardless of where we may be at right now, we ask, Father, that you will take us deeper. Lord God, that you would call us to those deep areas, Lord God. Father, because we know that's where the miracles take place. And so, Father, we ask, Lord God, that you would lead us into those areas. Lord thank you for what you are doing in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our community. And Father, for everything that is said and done, we give you and you alone all praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Would you look to somebody and say, go deeper. <laughs> At first, listening to our story uh, this morning, we can be fascinated by the miraculous catch. We can be fascinated the the crowds that were surrounding Jesus. There's so many things in the story uh, that takes place that can actually speak to our lives, but sometimes we forget what is actually going on here as well. It wasn't just that Jesus was there to teach the people. He was, and he did. He wasn't just there, though, uh, you know, to uh, perform a miracle. He did. But one of the things that he was there for was to make disciples. And in particular, to call one particular disciple, Peter. If you read on beyond what we read this morning, you'll find out after this, this is where Peter comes up to him and says, Lord, go away from me. You know, I'm not worthy to have you. And then Jesus turns around and what does he say to him? He said, listen, you will be fisher, no longer just a fisher, a fisherman of fish, but you'll be now a fisherman of souls, a fisherman of people. And this was the calling of Peter. Sometimes we get stuck on the miracles and stuff like that, we miss something. And I want to just take us a little bit, because I want us to go deeper in our faith. I think we can do that. I think sometimes we get stranded, we don't go deep enough. There's so many different things that go, get in the way. And so just taking a look at what Jesus did. And look, take a look at what he was in this opportunity, what he did, he, how he took advantage, and what he did, and where he went, you know, those things that were given to him, I think we can apply to our own lives as well. And so I'm going to ask, with you, ask you this morning, would you go deeper with me? Let's go a little deeper in this passage. Uh, amen? 
And so the first thing we see is that in first, uh, uh, verse 2, it says that he saw, this is Jesus, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. The fishermen have just got done fishing. They're now washing their nets. They've left their boats where it was. And Jesus, as you know right now, he's being pressed in on every side. If you take a look just in the last chapter, the end of the last chapter, many, many people were healed by Jesus. In fact, the Bible says they didn't even want to let him go. So this just carries over into the morning. In fact, one of the people that gets uh, healed is Peter's uh, mother-in-law. And so Peter already sees something going on here. But now Peter, when night falls, he goes out and he's fishing. And he's fishing all night long. But the throngs of the people don't leave. And one of the things I find so fascinating in this is just something that's so simple, is that Jesus saw. He saw something. I made that a point in my life. Whenever I see that Jesus saw something, I want to know, am I seeing this as well in my life? See, what was so important about that is that in the midst of everything that was going on, God was providing a platform for Jesus. See, this wasn't planned. Jesus didn't plan for this or anything else. God knew it was going to take place. you got to remember, Jesus being fully man, he's also fully God. This is a part of the Trinity that sometimes we don't quite understand. But in Jesus, while he's walking on the planet here right now, in the incarnation of God, what he is doing is he's limited to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And in by being limited right now, be, being taught and being led by the Holy Spirit, he teaches us how we can live this life, being led by the Holy Spirit as well. And one of the things, he, here he is, he's honestly, he's being pressed in. Now maybe you and I would be tempted to say, you know what, this is crazy. You know, guys, let me go. But Jesus begins to look for things. He's looking all around, very aware of his situation, aware of the elements around him, and he sees two boats. That was his way. He saw how God provided. That was his way. That was his, I didn't want to say out, but that was the way now he can now teach these people that were following him. He can get a little bit of distance so everyone can hear him. But, you know, here's the thing, is that sometimes it's tough, because sometimes we can be in situations when God wants to use us, and we're not necessarily aware of the surroundings around us. And I think God, one of the first things we need to understand is that he wants us to be aware and open to all the things that are around us, because you don't know what you can use. See, some things just aren't readily saying, hey, listen, use me. Here it is. This is what you've got. I mean, Jesus looking, he sees two boats, Holy Spirit leading him, putting these things together, and boom, it hits. And he knows exactly his next move. You and I got to be the same way, amen? We got to be able to take a look at, uh, at our surroundings and see what God is doing. Sometimes we give up, and we don't see any ministry opportunities. We don't see how there could be opportunities for any advancement or whatever it may be in, as far as going deeper. And God is saying, hey, listen, look around. Because when I take care of something, watch what I do. See, God won't also lead us anywhere that he won't also make provision. And we pick up in verse 3, it says this, he got into one of those boats. And now he makes a choice. He didn't just get into any of those particular boats. He got into one of them, and he chose which one he wanted, the one belonging to Simon. You know that Jesus is on a mission here. He's about to call Peter. He, wa he wants him to, to follow him. Peter would become instrumental. Right now he doesn't know how instrumental he will be for the church. He, when Jesus is resurrected and has gone to the Father, it is Peter that is in control of the Jerusalem church. He oversees everything in Jerusalem. It is under his authority as led by Jesus. But right now, he's a fisherman. Will he go deeper? You see, what you see right now, what started out as provision is turning into opportunity. And this is how God does. He provides for us. 
And then he takes what those provisions may be and he turns them into an opportunity if we are willing. And you know, that's one of the things we've got to take a look at in our lives. When we want to go deeper in our faith, in our calling, in ministry, when we want to go deeper with our family, whatever it may be, I don't care if it's a job, wherever you want to go and you want to go deeper into it, to get the most out of everything you can be for whatever God may use you for. Even in a job opportunity, that maybe you see very little opportunity for ministry. We need to go deeper because God will provide and in those provisions will come opportunity, always. See, Jesus takes, and this is so cool, Jesus takes the ordinary and he makes it extraordinary. He takes the mundane and they become exceptional. He takes our routines, maybe our daily routines, and he turns them into God moments if we allow him. And this is something we need to look back in our own lives. lives. We need to reflect, even at this moment, and say, listen, are there opportunities in my life? Have there been things that were going on in my life? Maybe I'm going about my daily routine, and God was trying to turn it into a God moment, where now, all of a sudden, this is where we know the leading of the Holy Spirit, and it becomes a moment of teaching, a moment of healing, a moment of prayer, a moment of leading, whatever it may be, and God is giving you direction. You see, it doesn't matter what it is, when we place it in the hands of our Lord, it is no longer the same thing. He changes it. Amen? And you know what's so cool? It's not just objects. It's us. He changes us. When we step out in faith, we begin to change. We can never be the same. And he knows this. And so now he says, hey, listen, will you just pull out a little bit? And so when they pull out a little bit, he begins to teach the people at the shore. And then he tells them, hey, listen, almost as if it's not enough, he says, listen in verse 4, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. I mean, it's so cool. It's so Jesus-like, isn't it? He not just tells them what to do and how to do it, but he tells them what to expect. That's a big part of our gospel, is it not? Jesus tells us what to do and how to do it. Throughout all the gospel, the good news, he's always telling us, and he tells us what to expect. I have found in my life that when I don't go deeper in Christ, it's when I have a problem with the expectation. You know, well, God, are you really going to heal me? Are we really going to see people get saved? Are we really going to see? That becomes the biggest problem. We're good on the, the doing and maybe how to do it, and we try to follow Jesus. But when it comes to the expectation, sometimes our expectations don't measure up to what God expected us, expected from us. And sometimes that's one of the biggest things. Sometimes we expect something that's not going to be there. And God said, that's not what I wanted from you. Just do this. Sometimes we expect too little, and God does incredible amounts. You see, these are all things that God is doing in our lives as he takes us deeper and deeper in faith. This is making sense. He tells them to put out into the deep water and let down those nets for a catch. Rowing into deep waters, following Jesus, may require risks to be taken, but in the end, it will always be worth it. See, if they were going to see the miracles, they were going to have to go where Jesus wanted to go. That's a big key, isn't it? Is that we follow him. When he's telling us to go somewhere, when he's telling us to do something, we follow him. If he says don't go there, or if he's not saying anything at all, we should not just venture in hoping that it'll make up the difference. Well, you know what, I'm going anyway. And that's not how it works. It's listening and being obedient to what God has in our lives. Launching in shallow waters you know, uh, requires very little effort, doesn't it? If you, all you need to do is go into little, you know, the shallow end, 
that doesn't require a whole lot. It doesn't require a whole lot of learning. It doesn't require a whole lot of effort. You just need to go there. In fact, you can get out of the boat and stand in shallow water. You go deep, it requires a little bit more. See, those on the shore, Jesus was teaching. They were taught. That's good for a while. Any new believer, any, and no matter where you're going, hey, if you go to college, you need to be taught. Eventually, you need to teach others. Eventually, you need to be performing whatever it is that you were taught. You need to put that in action. And so staying on the shorelines is okay for a while. But what is called for us is to go a little bit farther. Jesus was in the boat when they pulled out a little bit from the shore in shallow waters, and that requires a little bit more effort. It requires a little bit more commitment, but Jesus is there. And then Jesus tells them to go into deep waters. This is now teaching in action. It's in the deep waters where God speaks, and now you can listen. Why? Because the noise of the crowd is at the shore. Now you are in a position that you need to hear from God. It is in those deep waters that miracles take place, where you are no longer being taught, but you are now experiencing. This is what God calls for us, to go to the next level in our faith, not to just be one who is just always soaking in. That's good. Never stop learning. Never stop. But at one point in time in our lives, we've got to start teaching others. And part of the effective teacher is experiencing. It is going deeper. And it's in those deep waters now that you experience those miracles. You experience the voice of God. You don't have to have someone tell you about the miracles because now you're experiencing them. You see, and miracles are not always those uh, sea parting events. I mean, I want to see sea parting events. I've seen some incredible miracles in my life. But they're not always that way. In fact, most often, they are assurances or a word that God drops in your spirit, a word of faith that maybe you're not alone. I tell you what, to know that and to feel his presence, knowing you're not alone, is powerful. It's a time when maybe it's just a word that you can make it when you feel like you want to give up. Perhaps it's a word of faith saying that you are in the right place. Perhaps it's a guidance from God that he's now directing you in the choice that you need to make, the job which you need to take. Maybe it's an assurance that your marriage is going to make it. When maybe you thought you were at the end of it. Perhaps it's a word of knowledge. And an incredible amount of faith that begins to well up within you. And you know your child will be healed. You know that God is doing something. These are God moments. These are the times we need to go into deep waters, not shallow. See, the problem is, is that so many times we have kept ourselves either to the shoreline or just shallow waters because it doesn't require that much effort. And God is saying, that's nice, that's good, that's a start, but you need to go deeper. Peter is about to be called into a ministry that he doesn't even know how far and how deep it's going to be. And the impact that we're now talking about him and his call some 2,000 years later. That's how powerful this is. And I think that if we get that, if we understand certain things in our lives, you know, miracles are easy, not for us, for God. They're easy. For him. 
It's up to us to put ourselves into his hands that he can shape and form. It is up to us just to be a vessel that he can use. It is that important. And so where are we today? Are we living on the shore? Are we just a little bit away from it in the shallow parts? Or are we going deep? It's a good question to ask ourselves. I think that's a great litmus test. And where would you be if you had a scale? And you started off, just draw a straight line, put on one end deep. The other one shallow, and the other one sure. And just as a gauge, where would you put yourself? And then when you do that, don't just put it there like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm in between the shallow and the sure. You know, okay, that's fine. You've got to be realistic, right? We need to know where we're at and, and reality, right? But now, where do you want to be? That's also very important. And then draw yourself where you would like to be. And now, if this is where you are and this is where you want to be, how do you get there? What's your next step? What are you going to do that will get you off the shore into the shallow or from the shallow into deeper waters? I mean, that's going to be depending on all of us and the decisions that we make, our desire and what we want in our lives. And God is calling us, go deeper and deeper in your faith. And you will see and you will hear things the people have only talked about. I love listening and reading about the miracles and, and, and reading people. And I've got all kind of books. You want to read a book? I got them. And there's some incredible miracles throughout the centuries. And it's, a, it's, just, it's just incredible when I see that. And again, you got to remember, I'm not just talking about the sea parting miracles. And it's great. My spirit's uplifted. But what I need more than anything is to experience it in my own life. It doesn't happen while I'm on the shore just reading about it. Eventually, they weren't meant for me to put other people, those stories, those books weren't meant for me to take those people and put them on a pedestal and clap and applaud and say, well done. No, they were there and God allows it to be there to encourage us to take the necessary steps that we may go deep, that we may be a light to our generation that we may be an example for those that follow and that they too won't sit on the shoreline but saying, you know what, I'm going deep. I'm going to follow because that's where I want my family to be. That's where I want to be. That's where I need to be. And I tell you what, this is what God wants. You ever hear in football, you probably heard a term called Hail Mary, right? Now it's a play that's rarely ever done. But when it is done, and statistically, I don't know, they got like maybe 5%, you know, effectiveness or completion. Basically, it's at the end of the game. In fact, they don't even like to do it at the end of the, at the, end of the half. Why? Uh, because the ball can turn over, someone can take it in for an interception, you know, so it stays away. But it, it even happens at the end of the half. But mostly it's at the end of a game. When you only have one play left, there's not enough time on the clock to run a second play. Your kicker can't kick it. You know, that they're not going to make it. And so what you're going to do is you got one last play. And so what you're going to do is you're going to get your receivers. You're going to send them all the way into the end zone. That's important. Your receivers have got to go deep. They can't stay at the line of scrimmage. They can't be five or ten yards out. They've got to be in the end zone. That requires them to go deep. It's called a Hail Mary. Why? Because everyone knows you're doing it. The defense knows you're doing it. And they're stacking it back deep as well. It's called a Hail Mary because you need a prayer. <laughs> you have to pray for that miracle. So that hopefully they'll catch it. But the point of the matter is, is that the receivers can't get hung up at the line. They have got to make it into the end zone. So when the ball arrives they can at least make an attempt for it. Because the ball's going to get there. The ball's going to be there. But will the receivers? You know, I look, liken that, and it's like how God is for us, right? The ball's going to be there. You just go deep. The ball will be there, but will you be able to catch it? Well, not if you're not deep. 
It's there. God provides for us. He takes good care of us. He said, listen, man, I got you. Just go deep. Go deep. Following Jesus isn't easy. There will be interruptions in your life. <laughs> when Jesus first comes to Peter, he was in the middle of washing his nets. There was an interruption. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what's going on? Let me finish here. And so interruptions can come. Rowing deep may mean that you have to do it when you are at your most fatigued. When you are most fatigued. You're tired. This happens. Peter was up all night fishing. When an interruption comes, I'm sure the last thing he wanted to do after washing his net is to get back in the boat and go. He was done for the day, for the night. He wanted to crash. See, when God tries to get a hold of us, it, sometimes it's not so convenient. When ministry opportunities take place, it may not be the most convenient. You may be the most tired. There may be interruptions in your life. You know what? And God's saying it doesn't matter. You go. I love what Oswald Sanders says. He says, the world is run by tired men. And isn't that the truth? I'm tired all the time. <laughs> How about you, right? You probably agree. Say, yeah, I am too, Pastor. I'm tired all the time. Yet we make efforts. We go beyond that. Why? Because our children still need to eat. They still need to be taken to the doctor. They still need to be taken, you know, to uh, practice or wherever you may be taking them. And we can be really tired coming home from work, but we still make the effort to do that. And God's saying, listen, do the same. When it comes to your Christianity, when it comes to faith, do the same. Launch out deep. Make that effort. In Mark 14, 38, <laughs> we know this well. The spirit is willing, but what? The body is weak. The spirit wants to, but it's always the body that gets tired. It's the body that gets fatigued, the body that gets upset. And, and God is saying, listen, push through that. Your spirit can do it. Don't allow the flesh to dictate to your spirit. Allow the spirit to say, flesh, get in line. We're going to do this. We're going to do it because it's important. It has to be done. Your flesh will follow. It's amazing how you'll find some new strength, renewed strength. There's a lot of things that go on. It can be frustrating, discouraging at times when that call comes. But at the end, you've got to let God be God. Amen? Let God be God. I love Peter's response. He goes to Jesus after Jesus asks him to pull out. And I think this is the key to everything. Peter Almost looks like he's going to start a protest here. Man, we've been fishing all night and haven't caught a thing. But, okay, but, what almost started out like a protest, and we know Peter, right? He can be impetuous. He can just go out there and just say things, right? And next minute, it's like almost like he was in the middle of the sentence. He caught himself and said, but, because you say so, we'll do it. The last thing he wanted to do, I guarantee you. But he does it. That's the key. That's the key right there. Is when God tells us to do something, your flesh may want to say, no, I don't want to. But because you say it, I'm going to do it. Sometimes we have to wrestle. Sometimes we have to go to the Lord. When we want to, you know, revenge on something, it's, oh, okay, I'll pray for, their, I'll pray for a blessing instead. Grudgingly at first, and then if you continue to do it, it's amazing how all of a sudden your attitude changes. But it's the response of obedience that unties the hand of God. It was this response of just simple faith and obedience. Something that God longs for in each and every one of us. And the parents wish to see in their kids, right? <laughs> It's just a simple faith, man, I know. You know, I can't explain it. I don't have time to explain it right now, but just trust me on this. You know, we want that from our own kids, do we not at times? And you know they're going to push back here and there because they want to know why. They want to know certain things. It's not necessarily wrong until, unless they rebel. But it's that simple faith 
and obedience that God says, follow me, launch out. You know, it was that simple faith that also allowed Peter to walk on water. A simple act of obedience and faith. Remember when Jesus was on the, you know, at the sea and they, they weren't sure, they thought it was a ghost at first, and Jesus is walking on water and Peter yells out to him, if it is you, tell me to come. Interesting. He was waiting for a word. Because all prayer is talking to God, right? So he's talking to God, asking for a word. Should I go out? And Jesus said, come. One word. Peter gets out of the boat. Simple faith and obedience. And he goes out there and he's now walking on water. What started out as him launching into deep waters is now seeing him, that same little act of obedience and faith, is now seeing him walk on water. I don't know what God has in store for your life and for your ministry, for wherever the direction he's leading you. But I do know this, whatever it is, he will want you to go deeper, deeper in faith, deeper in commitment, deeper in prayer life, deeper in reading the word of God, deeper in all those things. I tell you what, it is in those areas that you will know that he is with you. And so I ask again, where are you? Are you on the shore? Are you in shallow end? Or have you ventured into deeper waters? Because all of that is important. Amen? You know, the truth is, when they let down that net, they caught so much that the boat began to sink. They couldn't even hold it. It's like, where, where were these fish? All night we've been fishing. If they only caught just one fish, that would have been, that would have been a miracle catch. <laughs> Think about it, right? Yeah, we caught one. We were here all night. We didn't get anything. We got one. But Jesus doesn't do it that way, does he? He doesn't just give you just one or two. He lets you know that you were in his will. There's a flood that comes over us. And we know that we know that we know that we know that we're in his will. Because we've just seen it. Whether it be all the confirmations, whether it be a miracle catch like we see in Peter, whatever it may be. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you. This morning, we celebrated last week, Easter Sunday. No way you can sit there and say that Jesus didn't go deep. He went as deep as you could go. He gave it all, left nothing. Everything in the tank was spent. And so now as we reflect back on Easter, we are called to go deeper. See, while Jesus was alive on earth, he was the main teacher. But that isn't the way it was always meant to be. Not forever. That's why he spent so much time instilling himself and teaching his disciples and those around and including us. We are, have that baton. And it's great to celebrate Easter. It's great to celebrate and, and, be, and celebrate the victory we have in Christ, all the benefits of a new covenant, eternal life, removal of guilt, freedom from sin. I mean, oh man, that's all great, right? But now what do we do with it? We are called to go deeper. We are called to witness. We are called to lead others and teach others. We are called to go as deep as we can. And I tell you what, God will speak to you along the way. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord God. Father, we ask right now, Lord, that you would just speak and minister to each and every one of us. Lord God, we want to go deep in you. It's not enough just to stay at the shore, Lord God. You've asked us to go deeper in ministry. You've asked us to go deeper in our commitment and our knowledge and everything that's, that is necessary. And so, Father, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would minister to each and every one of us. And whether you're here right now this morning in this sanctuary or if you were home right now, God is speaking the same to each and every one of us. And that word is to go deeper. 
Go deeper in your faith. Don't settle for the shoreline. Nobody catches anything. It's in the deep waters where the miracles take place. He's asking us right now to go to that deep. And so maybe right now, regardless of where you're at, you're saying, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. Maybe you've never accepted him before in your life. Maybe you've never made him the Lord of your life. Maybe you've never repented from your sins and asked him to just, just to come in to live with you. Maybe you've never experienced the forgiveness of sin and the removal of guilt. But I'm telling you, it is so real. That's the place to start. Before you can launch and go any farther, that's where it starts. And so right now, if you're within the sound of my voice, whether in the sanctuary or home right now, I ask, would you just pray this prayer with me this morning? Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the answer to all of my needs. And I ask you, Jesus, right now, for your forgiveness and for your help to live the life that you have marked out for me. I ask for your forgiveness for all of my sins, for all of my wrongdoings. And I accept you, Jesus, right now into my life as my Savior. It's in your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you committed your life for the first time or recommitted your life, would you let somebody know? If you're in this sanctuary, I'm going to ask if you would just come forward. We have some materials. I would love to be able to talk with you and just spend time with you, pray with you. If you're online right now and you've made that decision, I'm going to ask right now, would you just let somebody know online? It's that important. Just let them know that that was a decision you made. If you need a Bible, we want to get that, a Bible too. We'll mail it to you. Just make sure you fill out that Connect card and there's information right there. We'll make sure you get it. Just let us know. I tell you what, it's a great place to start. But this is the things that God requires from us. God is good, isn't he? I'm going to ask the worship team to lead us in worship. And I just want you right now, right where you're at, regardless of where you may be on that line, on the shore, or in deep waters, regardless of where you're at, can you, as we worship God right now, just commit our lives to Him and ask, Father, wherever we are at, take us deeper. Take us deeper. Let's seek Him, church. Let's seek Him.